Hey guys, I'm Rob. Have you ever thought of eating literally with no money? That's exactly what I'm going to do for the next three days. Since I was a child, I always would like to do a no money challenge. Now that I'm, I'm bored at home due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's the perfect time to do it. So for the next three days, I'm not allowed to use any money. Instead, I have to go and find my own food in the garden and from the wild. By eating with no money, it doesn't mean that I will eat crappy food. I want to make some of the most delicious food that I ate in my entire life. And like every good challenge, we need some rules. Rule number one, I cannot use money from any currency, obviously. Rule number two, I could use my own work and time in exchange of food directly without using money in between. It's a no money challenge, it doesn't mean I don't have to work. Rule number three, as it's only three days challenge, I will be allowed to use kitchen tools, otherwise leaving with literally with a no money challenge will be a mission impossible. Rule number four, I cannot use any paid energy or resources like electricity or heat. I have to generate all my energy and get my resources. So I cannot use this food processor, neither this electrical hot plate because it uses electricity and I'm not allowed to use paid energy. So these are all the rules and I'll try to follow them as much as possible. Now it's past breakfast time and I am starving. I have no food preparation whatsoever. So I'm just going for a walk and see if I can find something to eat. Just a quick note, if you are thinking that's almost impossible to live without money, you are right. Um, I'm not here against money in the modern society, despite all the good and bad that it can generate. Um, I would just like to respect more the food we eat and take its real value and see how important is money as a tool. So my first stop is the fig tree. This is my favorite tree in the world. It's still quite early in the season, but let's see if we have any luck. This is the first fig of the season. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. Mmm, this is so good so so sweet one of my favorite fruits in the world also find here some grapes so there are here some plums before I taking these first I'm just taking from the ground because this should be much sweeter mm. so good just one more this is the best breakfast that I could ever ask for. So sweet, so delicious, and infinite fruit. Next challenge is going to be lunch. So I came to this pine forest, just to clarify, this is a private property and I ask permission to come here. I don't want to steal anything to anyone and not make people angry, uh, but there are lots of private properties around this area with lots of small pieces of wood and the owner said it's fine, you come here and dig whatever you want. I was about to light up the fire, but I just realized that the matches and the lighter are paid energy, so I am not allowed to use it. Um, when I was in Australia, I learned how to do fire through the wood friction. I will try it anyway, because I just don't want to eat raw food and see how it goes. So this is the first time trying to make fire. There we go. We have the bow, we have the stick, and we have the base. 
and I have this the fire starter as well. The only thing that I remember from the Australian method is that this is extremely hard. I already broke one rope, already broke the second rope. I have to try another method. I quit this one for now. So now I'm going to try on making fire with a magnifying glass. Wish me luck. Otherwise, I have to eat raw food. Let's see. It's hot, it's becoming hot. Ah. Ah. There's fire, there's fire, there's fire. Ah, fire, finally. I guess we have a fire, yeah? Yes! The luxury item that I chose for this challenge is salt. I could easily survive three days without it, but it makes the food so much tastier. So the last time I went to the beach, I collected five liters of Atlantic Ocean seawater. I brought it home, I filter it, I boil it, and I left it in the sand for two full days. So here is all the salt. After two full days, I've got 300 grams of sea salt. Um, I never thought of making my own salt, but this is quite amazing. I just love it. It's so much fun. I just realized I have no water. I'm going to quickly run to the water stream and hopefully get some water. I already got some fresh water ready to cook and free of charge so I'm wondering what's going to be my lunch and if I think about cheap food I straight away think of pasta flour rice or oats but despite of being cheap it doesn't mean it's free so one is not zero so recently my grandparents collected all their potatoes so I'm just going to check if there is any leftovers one potato yes 
Couple of more. Here we go. Managed to find a dozen of potatoes. Haha, <laughs> super happy. I have here at least a couple of meals. I'm not sure if you can see, but this row here is all the onions. I planted around 100 onions like four months ago. I hope they are ready. Just get straight from the garden, an onion, a tomato and a cucumber. Now with the green beans and the potatoes, that will be the first lunch. So now I'll put some potatoes. I'll kind of break them a little bit. Now some cucumber. This is the perfect combination. Now some tomato. Wow, looks delicious. That's it. First lunch with no money, it's completed. Just missing one thing, olive oil. This olive oil was offered me from my grandparents um, on during the last autumn, I helped them uh, pick up the, all the olives and they gave me this as a present. So, time to enjoy now. These potatoes with cucumber, they are so delicious. This tomato was picked up five minutes ago. It cannot be fresher. Mmm, it's full of flavor. How this dish is so simple and full of flavor. It blows my mind, really. So, so good. Everything so fresh, no chemicals, bio, local, and with no money. For dinner, I would like to do something more international with the local ingredients and light up the wooden oven. And I was thinking about making pizza. <laughs> I think it's a terrible idea because I don't have any wheat flour. Uh, but anyway, a couple of months ago, I helped my grandparents uh, to cultivate some corn. So I'm just quickly go there and see if there is any corn. So I'm taking a couple of dry ones to make flour and a green one to grill on a barbecue later on. some good corn and this is good to make some tea I don't know for what but I think it's good as I cannot use electricity I'm not able to use a, a mill electrical mill to make flour so I'm going to use this manual one It doesn't fit. I have to find another table. This is the first meal. We will apply a couple of more. 
It's getting there. And I can smell already the cornbread. It took us six times to make the final flour. Once I ground the grain, I sieve the flour to remove any coarse particles. Add some salt. Every time that I cook with corn flour, I prefer to scald the flour first with boiling water to gelatinize the starch. To make pizza, I'm using cornbread dough for the base. As corn doesn't have any gluten, it's extremely hard to shape the dough. At least it's great news for the, all the gluten-free and celiac pizza lovers out there. This process took me a while to figure it out. Eventually, I managed to use a paper sheet and turn it upside down. Instead of making the pizza in the normal way, for this one we have to pre-cook the pizza base first before adding the other ingredients. For the tomato sauce, I collected a couple of tomatoes from the garden, peeled and removed the seeds. Cook the tomatoes with some olive oil in the high heat until we reduce all the liquid and become smooth. For the cheese, I would like to use some nuts. In the last autumn, I picked up walnuts from the tree and stored them. Now I crack and clean them, and they taste better than ever. Look at this precious. So delicious. I just quickly roast them, and with the help of a mortar, I made a fresh walnut butter. To finalize, I add some lemon juice, olive oil and salt. For the toppings, just check what I have in the garden and put some red onion, bell pepper and cherry tomatoes. And one of the most important ingredients in a pizza, oregano, that I collected a couple of weeks ago from the wild. A little bit of olive oil. Put the pizza back in the oven and bake it. Beautiful! Leave it in the oven for about 5 minutes and once it's cooked, remove it and add some basil leaves. That's it! Vegan pizza with a corn flour, gluten free and it looks good. Let's try it out. I thought eating with no money, I would be eating so much worse. I would easily pay money to eat this in the restaurant. I'm kind of surprised of this one, but all the ingredients are good, so the pizza has to be good. The curious thing about this pizza is it's uh, gluten-free and it doesn't have cheese, so it doesn't stay very long in your mouth. It's very easy to, to eat and very pleasant. This pizza is so nice. As the fire is already on and the oven is warm up, I'm going to use the same energy to cook all this food for the next days. This way I don't have to go back to the forest, pick up a lot of wood and waste a lot of energy. But I'll explain it tomorrow what it's all about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow on this No Money Challenge. Please help me on subscribing to my channel, I would be very much appreciated.